Alex here with you on Golden Days Radio. I have a very special studio guest. This will give you a clue. John Bellingham, 93 years old. Giveaway, isn't it? John Vertigan. It's not a clue. That's a dead giveaway. (laughs) Welcome to Golden Days Radio, John. Thank you, Alex, and I'm delighted to be here. Well, you've been a name in radio in Melbourne for many, many years, and I think what my listeners would like to know, where it all began for you. Well, it began when I was around about eight years old. I got what is known as the radio bug. (laughs) I don't think so many people are getting it these days. They're more or less accountants and just counting the the beans, yes. but uh, the people with that real love for radio, the real feel for radio, yep. was, was uh, very prevalent uh, back when I became interested. At the age of eight, uh, still in primary school, I got the bug by attending uh, the local radio station, which was 7BU in Burnie. Burnie. And they had a children's program, as was their want in those days. They had children's programs and women's programs and serials and plays, and it was everything, uh, all things to everybody. And the children's program was called the Sun Polishers. Oh. And um, there were quite a few members. You had to register. Mm-hmm. Uh, it didn't cost anything. But uh, you had the opportunity of rolling up to the studio in the afternoon and sitting on the floor and singing nursery rhymes and getting up and into the microphone. And when you put your hand up, the lady comp here would beckon you over and you would stand up and say, I'd like to send a cheerio to my mum and my dad and my sisters and my brothers and all <laughs> This sort of thing. And uh, if you got lucky, you got to sing a nursery rhyme or two. And I was just intrigued with the workings of the radio studio in those days with the turntables and the microphones and the switching and and, uh, never ever dreaming that I would uh, ever be professionally involved in radio. Right. But I, I just loved it. And um, that love didn't disappear. I, we moved to Launceston and I joined uh, Peter's Pals on 7LA in Launceston and <laughs> took part in radio plays and presentations and whatever. Uh, we had a mouth organ band there, so I played in that. That was a very popular mouth organ band. Oh, in those they days. were in those days. <laughs> uh, and um, in fact, I was just trying to think, uh, the late uh, Alan Freeman oh, yes. was there at that time. He uh, went to the UK later and became known as Fluff Freeman. He was uh, one of uh, Britain's leading disc jockeys for, for some years. He was years. quite he, a well-known... Um... Yeah, sadly, he passed away mm. uh, a year or so back. Mm. But uh, he uh, he was leading the mouth organ band and uh, so on and so forth with Peter's pals. And 16, uh, at the age of 16, my father moved to the mainland, is what Tasmanians call Victoria and any other part of Australia. <laughs> And uh, he was a journalist, a print journalist. Right. In fact, was uh, an honorary member of the Australian Journalists Association, a uh, life member, honorary. Um, And uh, he moved to Victoria to set up a new newspaper in in Gippsland. And I... uh, No, 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 he first started at the Geelong Advertiser. Right. So I landed the job at 3GL. I hounded Reg Gray and company and knocked (laughs) on the door and... And uh, they thought it might be easier to employ him and keep sending him away. Exactly. So I was a cadet announcer and uh, office boy, and uh, I used to go and get Reg's cigarettes for him, and uh, uh, I'd dispatch transcriptions back to Melbourne, uh, transcriptions being the big 16-inch uh, exactly. on yes. which the plays and the serials came. <laughs> and uh, I served a, a very short apprenticeship there, of three months, before I joined the family in Gippsland and landed a job at 3UL in Warrigal. Oh, right. And there I learned. It was like a lot of community radio today. You learned on the job. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't uh, attend a formal uh, radio school. Uh, uh, my voice was Not a Lee Murray there. boy. <laughs> not a Lee Murray boy. Not a Vincent School of Broadcasting boy. I didn't have any formal training. I learned on the job. So I was very lucky. Right. And 3UL was a, a very good training ground in Warrigal. Um, did everything there. Absolutely everything. And... Uh, Then in 1961, I was honeymooning in Hobart with my young bride and landed a job at 7HO in Hobart, where I became a disc jockey because in the early 60s, of course, DJs were all the rage, playing the top 40 or top 100 or whatever. Whatever it was. I did uh, news reading there. I did uh, radio roundsman. Uh, A lot of uh, the Macquarie, early Macquarie uh, programs were heard there, like Monitor and Omnibus. 
and those sort of things, and uh, the disc jockey programs were separate. And they still playing the serials, and they'd have country and western music every Friday afternoon, and it was a hodgepodge. Mm-hmm. But uh, it worked in those days. Yes, it would have. And then um, came over to Victoria and landed a job at 3UZ as a Midnight to Dawn disc jockey. That's in where you started at 1963. Midnight to Dawn. Yeah. Did you Mid- enjoy Mid- that? Dawn. Not terribly. <laughs> I mean, who enjoys Midnight to Dawn? And I was to revisit Midnight to Dawn uh, in the early 80s. Were you? When I went to Radio Australia as a freelance. Uh-huh. And, uh, of course, that's peak time. Mm. Midnight to Dawn's peak time on shortwave radio it if you're heading dead. to the Northern yeah. Hemisphere. But anyway, it's another story. So you said. You said. Lewis Bennett. Lewis Bennett. Oh, what a wonderful man. Much admired man in Australian radio. Great, great man. Oh, uh, sit there at his desk with his bow tie, and uh, there was something very special about this man. Yeah. And uh, I haven't met, I've, I've met some very good managers and very nice people, but uh, nobody could come anywhere near mm. Lewis Bennett. Mm. He was a legend. He was. And I uh, spent 63, no, I spent 15 years at UZ, mm-hmm. mainly disc jockey programming, uh, the top 40 news, weather, and sports. And speaking of sports, uh, <laughs> I was uh, invited in on the Saturday afternoon sports panel to help Bob Cornish. And Bob later went on to become manager, so didn't have time to be uh, fiddling around with uh, radio, uh, on-air programs. So I was the sole driver of the machine on a Saturday afternoon, and that's where I got the, uh, the, the racing coordination I gig. I tell you what, we, I, as, a, as, as teenagers listening to... UZ, my mate and I had a little station at home and we tried to keep up with you with bringing in the call. But how you managed to bring in the jump at Oak Bank or they're at Morfordville or there's yeah. something like, you know, it was amazing. It was uh, always interesting when there was a two way clash or even a three way clash. Exactly. Because there was no Sky Channel in those days <laughs> no. and, and uh, they weren't sort of watching to say, well, now hang on, they've just jumped there, we'll hold. No, no such animal as that. Mm. Uh, they jumped whenever they were ready to jump. That's right. And sometimes they were late and I would curse and rant and rave. And well, Des Ford I spoke to just the other day and Des was saying that uh, he uh, in, was doing um, the show in Adelaide and would be taking your, you know, the call you'd, you'd be saying down the line, uh, we're going to Moody Valley in 30 seconds or something like that and you were spot on. He, he yeah. was really wrapped in your, the way you did things. <laughs> I like to help the relay stations. I yeah. didn't want to, uh, you know, yeah. make it too difficult for them. But, uh, but it, 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 you must have had your wits about you, really. Yeah, you had to. You had to have your yeah. wits about you. Well, I was doing it up until uh, 08, 08 when I retired, and it, it helped keep Alzheimer's at bay, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, just some of the personalities who were at use it at that time, because they, they, they were great days, weren't yeah, they? Those yeah. early, the 60s, 63 onwards, yeah. when you had Lappin. Alan Lappin, the late Alan Lappin, yeah. the late Don Lunn, the late Don Rainsford. Yeah. I'm sorry to say the late, the late because... Uh, yeah, well, you know, I mean, that's, that's well, the way that it is. It's inevitable. I'll be the late John Verdigan pretty soon. I would. Well, there you go. But, I mean, <laughs> we try and eke out as long as we can. Of course we do. But they must have been great days. They were fabulous days. There was a special atmosphere around UZ, which was located in those days at 45 Burke Street, yeah. the original... Uh, premises of Oliver J. Nilsson, who owned the, the station. That's right, years. established in, uh, well, Oliver J. Nilsson established in 1916 and yeah. the station from 1925. 1925, it got its first licence. That was a B-class station. They yeah. were able to have paid advertorials. Absolutely, <laughs> and that they did. And uh, to this day, uh, they still advertise. But um, I, uh, just harking back and and. and I should have mentioned this earlier, that when I was a kid in Launceston, sometimes I'd wag school in order to stay at home and listen to 3UZ to Nicky and Graham. Now you're talking. Cliff Cliff Nichols Witter, was that it? Cliff Nichols Witter. That's right. And, of course, Graham Kennedy. His turntable boy. Exactly. Now, he got the gig. There was another turntable boy who was... We had to go off into the army for national yeah, service. I, just, now, I can't uh, look, think of the guy's name. Um, no, I was. Uh, no, I can't. And, and Graham got the gig. He got the gig. And but uh, what a team! And there was another person there at the time in the record library, but the name of Henry Gay. Oh, right. and Henry oh, and I yes. uh, communicate on uh, Facebook. And, yes, uh, with social emails. media and all that. He's sort a of stuff. funny man. He's got some <laughs> wonderful stories to tell about. I'll have to years. speak to Henry. Oh yes, you must. <laughs> 
Uh, he, some of them are rather slanderous, actually, but, uh, or uh, not for publication, but, but uh, for your own personal amusement. Exactly. But um, yeah, Henry's uh, up in Queensland, where a lot of uh, ex-Victorian radio people have gravitated. Yes. Um, yes. John Bright's up there. Yes, um, indeed. Les Heil is up there. Um, Ken Guy. Yeah, he yes. used to be in, in uh, the newsroom at UZ some years ago. Yes, uh, I remember Ken. He's up there. I uh, communicate with Ken via emails and whatever. Speaking of newsrooms and mm -hmm. the 3UZ news, why don't we just have a pause for 30 seconds and let's have a listen to what was the old 3UZ news theme? The Midi March. The Midi March. Here it is. <laughs> Now, you'd cross to a particular newsroom. Uh, yeah, the Argus newsroom originally, and then uh, UZ set up their own newsroom. So That's right. Well, the Argus went out of business too in... Uh... 1957, actually, mm. and I was crossing to the Argus News um, when I was at 3UL first in yes. 55, yes. but only for a couple of years, and then the Argus disappeared. That's uh, right. November 57, I think, from memory. I think it was actually mm. around that time. I can't remember why, under what circumstances they, they did. I they guess did. ceased publication. Mm. I, it's uh, sort of like today, really, uh, you know, mm. with uh, newspapers uh, yeah. going online and not being printed anymore around the world. It's, well, it's, that, of course, is an issue, isn't it? I mm. mean, uh, there's so much available online, and uh, who wants to, you know, print? read print media if they can see it online. Exactly. Um, so we're at UZ in the 1960s and you're given the job as the uh, coordinator, I suppose, racing coordinator? Racing coordinator. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how long did you do that, John? Oh, years and years. Yeah. Um, I think I started in 1969 doing that yeah. and uh, I finished doing it in 08, 2008. Wow. Wow. Uh, but, of course, I, I left UZ. Yes, because you – now, there wasn't there a change of ownership? No, not at that stage. 3UZ was still owned by Oliver J. Nilsson. Right. Uh, I became um, a, a assistant to the general manager, and I got an offer from 2UE in Sydney. Oh. Uh, my old friend Rod Spargo, who was originally on, uh, on air at UZ with Ugly Dave Gray. Oh, right. He was up in Sydney as program director of 2UE, and he said, come on up, we need somebody to coordinate the racing. So I thought, well, this will be a change in direction. Mm. Uh, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So exactly. up we went to 2UE and uh, I spent nearly a year there when uh, my dear friend and who was once uh, best man at my wedding, uh, the late Keith Graham, uh, beckoned me to come across to 2WS, which was the fledgling radio station in Western Sydney. Oh. Uh, Keith uh, and uh, two of his uh, executives were sadly killed in a dreadful road accident oh. uh, some 15 or so years ago, uh, up in northern New South Wales. But anyway, uh, Keith invited me over and I joined TWS and I was there for two or three years, uh, but not on air. I was, uh, of course, there was no racing there. Mm. Uh, it was uh, a formatted music station and a very good one and rated well. And I was, uh, first of all, operations manager. Right. Uh, at the time that Mike Webb was uh, the program director. Yes. That's Graham Webb's brother. Oh, right, yes. And then uh, I became community affairs and public relations for the station. And I uh, took on public speaking and I went right across Western Sydney, which is a vast area, speaking to Rotary and Lions and Apex Clubs about 2WS and about my radio memoirs. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did that for a, for a couple of years and then uh, decided to come home. So I landed a job at 3DB. And, were uh, they uh, still in Flinders Lane at that time? Or they were they? in the dungeon underneath the Herald Sun building. Uh, I must say that that was the low point of my career because nothing was happening. The station was in the doldrums. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't get it up and running. And uh, uh, Sadness, really. It was sad because DB was one of the greats, as was UZ mm. many, many years ago. Mm. Mm. But uh, time changes everything. Yes. And... Uh, 
uh, DB fell on, on hard times and uh, got sold two or three times in, in one week. That was amazing, that, uh, that period. The, I've often run on this station, uh, there's a 17-part story, the 3DB story, which is narrated by Bert Newton. Yeah, and I've produced. I've, you've yeah, got that, yeah. and produced by Gerd Rowland. And and when you hear the great radio, you know, shamozzle and yeah. uh, this news flashes and da da da, and yeah. and everything was going. No one knew who owned what in the end. I don't no, think. No, no. And it was a sadness, really. And then Bert came in and took over uh, DB, and I left, and freelanced for a year. Uh, did some work on Radio Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, voiceovers, you know, Geelong, Melbourne, all around the place, just to keep my head above water. Mm. And then uh, Bert called me in one day and he said, hey, would you like to come back to DB? And um, I thought, well, you know, I've got to st- I'm still paying off a mortgage. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so I went back to DB and um, not in an executive capacity because I was program director there when Bert came in and he didn't want two program directors, so I had to go. Mm. But um, I returned as uh, an on-air person uh, doing Saturday mornings. I should have been back on Saturday afternoons, but never mind. Mm. Uh, And also uh, during the week. And um, then in 88, um, 3UZ was bought by the racing industry. Right. And... The setup was that UZ would return to racing because it had dropped out completely. It had yes. in the interim. Mm. Uh, would return to racing, and uh, half DB's staff went across, and right. I was one of them. Yes. So uh, I was there from '88 right through till uh, '08. And now, which is another twenty another years. Another twenty years. Was that where they changed the name? Was that the name change? Yes. Yes. So it, it became uh, Sport Nine Two Seven. Then it became. Uh, Oh, I've lost track now. I think it's RNS or Radio. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. Racing now myself. Sport National, something like something that. like that. But uh, it's terribly <laughs> confusing. It is, but at least they're still there. Yeah. Um, so that's that. They, they must have been uh, well. Good to get back, get the feet under the desk, and coordinating the races again. You would have absolutely enjoyed that, yeah. and especially when they um, revamped their studio setup and put in modern uh, digital equipment, mm. and everything was on computer. Yeah. So uh, if you had a, a, a racing clash, uh, you didn't have to have somebody through a window with two big tape recorders spooling through. Yes. Uh, you just hit a button on the... Uh, uh, you record it and then... And, then and you could start playing it back before the race had finished, <laughs> 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 which wasn't a wise move, I shouldn't have thought. One of the personalities that you mentioned talking uh, at the time when you were at UZ was, was Alan Lappin. Ah, uh, Lap Lap. Yeah, Wonderful. He, he, he broke the mould uh, because at that time in the 60s, you had to have the American influence, not necessarily an American accent, but you had to work like an American, yes. not Lap Lap. Yeah. He worked like an Australian. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying he was lazy no. or not too no. laid back, no. but he spoke uh, uh, the idiom, uh, g'day pallies, you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he, he, he was one of the first of the jocks to capitalise on the Australian accent and good on him. Good there's, on him. There's a, now, there's a story. Now, you can confirm whether this is, this is true, but I've heard that when UZ got all of this wonderful jingle package done in the United States, the jingles came out and it was 3UZ. They made a mistake. And they had to send it back. They're no good to us. And here is a sample of that very same jingle package. The station with the nicest listeners. Has got lap lap on three you sent. Lap lap, that's what we sent. Alan Lappin will make your life worthwhile. Just two nine thirty on your dial. You get news, you get information, music, and education with lap lap on three you sent. The station with the nicest listeners. The most frequently, frequently, frequency in the state. Dial 9 3 the Greater 3UZ. Stay tuned and keep happy with the Greater 3UZ. Fun radio for listening. Oh, 
for some recreation you'll enjoy. You get all the news and all the sports, all the traffic and weather reports, so dial 930 Fun Radio. It's great. <laughs> it yeah, was great. Good stuff. Good stuff. They were a, a, a terrific package. Yeah. It came out of Hollywood. I, yeah, yeah. Um, a, a company by the name of Sandy and Green, which mm. wouldn't be familiar to our listeners anyway. But uh, the way American way of saying Z is Z. And of course, they and of course when the package first arrived, we were horrified. You know, it was the greater three UZ. <laughs> and we sent it back and said, uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, do you look? This is an example how it must be said. The greater three you said, I suppose. Yeah, to yeah, we had to, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they wouldn't, they wouldn't understand. No, so yeah. wonderful. But um, lap, lap. Oh God, what a broadcaster! Yeah, he was. It was amazing. Yeah. I can yeah. remember in uh, I was in the bank in 1963 and listening to UZ on a tranny on a beach at Port Ferry of all places <laughs> in the summer of 1963 a, tr- a tranny means something else these <laughs> days no, it does but and so does Port Ferry but anyway <laughs> yes, we won't go there <laughs> but you know what I mean <laughs> yeah I know. so yeah. that has wonderful memories and yeah. uh, oh gee yeah no it, it, it evokes uh, great memories of the uh, the AM jocks of the early 60s. Stan Rove. Stan, what a legend Stan was. He uh, moved on to DB in, in later years. He came from KZ, did he not? KZ. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, before then, he was at uh, uh, Burnie in Tasmania, I think, for a while. Or Devon, no, 7 AD Devonport, seven, I think it was. Okay. And then came across, um, um, I'm, look, I'm not sure of the chronology of his um, career, but uh, he did end up at KZ. That's where he became... The name, Stan the Man. That's right. Somebody gave him that name there at KZ when they were up in the Trades Hall. And he was working at that time. There would have been Keith Livingston. Yeah, the the Doc. Yeah, I remember the advertising (laughs) campaign when uh, um, the Doc first signed on at KZ, uh, Keith Livingston. uh, uh, Livingston meets Stanley. That's right. Yes. (laughs) And that was the press advertising. Beautiful. You couldn't have scripted it any better. Exactly. And Stan, of course, joined uh, the Greater Three UZ, and uh, along uh, with uh, who was there at the time, uh, Don Lunn, mm-hmm. who has since passed on, unfortunately. Um, Ken Sparks was there. He's, he's one of the survivors, that, along with me, he the is. original UZ. Yes, mate. I met Ken many years ago in, a, in, in my banking environment, actually. Yeah. Yeah, long Ken's time ago. still very active uh, with voice work. He's Where the, is he now? He's based in Sydney, but he's been doing um, – he's had a um, – a project in China. I'm not full bottle on it, mm. but uh, he's been up there. And uh, but he's based in Sydney, and he's got a TV program, uh, you know, a jukebox uh, TV program on uh, cable television, I think. Oh. And um, good voice. Uh, well, he's still the voice of Channel Nine. Mm. Mm. Still the voice, and mm. he's been in that situation for many, many years. Yes, he he's has. a great voice. Yeah. And is a, a, a very keen fan of car racing. When did uh, what what you finished in what two thousand and eight? Two thousand and eight. Yeah. I uh, I was partially retired for ten years. Right. Semi retired. Right. In other words, I was uh, commuting from the Mornington Peninsula, where my late wife and I had bought a, a place. Right. Uh, and uh, I was commuting two days a week, Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, to do the main racing programs, and uh, that went on for about ten years. Mm. Um, sadly, she passed away. Mm. And I met this lady on the internet uh, uh, by accident, oh. not by design. Mm-hmm. I didn't go into a, a, a dating site or anything like All that. Right. It was a, but uh, we met by accident. And um, uh, in '04, I went up to uh, the States to meet her and uh, made six subsequent trips mm. uh, and then uh, became engaged and ultimately went up and married her. And mm. uh, unfortunately, um, it didn't work out. So. So I came back uh, last last year, mid last year, and uh, moved into a, a new unit in Rye, down on the peninsula. Down on the peninsula, back in uh, December. And 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 what are you doing? How do you well, keep occupied? Apart well, from I, coming in and speaking with me on Golden Day. Well, that's right. Also, I had a chat to uh, Ray uh, Lawrence and, uh, oh, yes. and Roy uh, yes. uh, Hampson on uh, Eastern FM mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, what do I do with my time? Well, I've rejoined uh, the uh, Provis Club 
with which my late wife and I were uh, foundation members, so mm-hmm. I rejoined that. Right. Um, I go to the local primary school and uh, listen to the kids read and read back to them. Um, I go to cooking men's cooking classes, and I go fishing at every available opportunity. Well, there you go. And I love reading, and I like my music. I've got you know a collection of music in the computer and on CD and, yes. and uh, yeah. DVDs, and uh, I watch a bit of television. I listen to a lot of radio, and life is good. And I catch up with you on uh, Facebook, social media, and all that sort of thing. I love setting up oh. these little quizzes, placing pieces of music on, and tell me what the name. You guessed one the other day, which was when a girl marries. And, and I was for all there. those who are in love and all those who can remember. That's it. That's it. And then uh, more recently, Hop Harrigan. I picked that one too. Uh, yes, I you got that one. We've started the ball rolling on a discussion on that one, I think. We have. <laughs> <laughs> John, I want to thank you so much for coming in and seeing us uh, here at Golden Days. I know the listeners will be absolutely delighted with our chat, and uh, I just can't thank you enough. Alex, it's been a delight. (laughs) I just love chatting about the old days of radio and uh, people I knew and met and uh, how I learnt things. uh, Well, this this sort of uh, a chat... Uh, goes into the archive and it's it's you know there for forever. But uh, we we remember fondly those who have gone before, and it's nice to reminisce. Yeah, absolutely, and nice to talk about this radio station. Nice to come home to three.